Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome back to News Dose. And PlayStation over the last week has been pretty busy. They have been criticized in recent years for being a little quiet, but you really can't say that this last week. And I mean, you do have that PlayStation showcase making its debut tomorrow. I do expect some big announcements to be announced over there. But even today, they announced a brand new studio acquisition. Yeah, this was kind of out of nowhere, and the studio acquisition itself is a little bit of a surprise, but I think this one does have some potential, so we're going to go over that today. Plus, we might have got some new information on a PlayStation 5 Pro. Yeah, right now it looks like this might be a real thing, so we will go over all of that today. We're also going to be talking about just how busy the month of September is because it is looking absolutely stacked right now. But as always, let's just go and jump right into the news, starting off with Crash Bandicoot. So Crash 4 did release last year, and I thought this was a phenomenal 3D platformer. Probably one of the better 3D platformers made in recent years, though it's definitely got some competition now with, you know, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, you have It Takes Two, and now you also have Psychonauts 2. There's just been a lot of these good 3D platformers that's been released in the last 12 months, and well, Crash 4 is definitely one of those games. Well, interestingly enough, though, even though Crash 4 did release just here recently, it sounds like they might actually be set to announce a brand new Crash Bandicoot game as early as this week. Now, this is actually for several different reasons as well. So over on the main Crash Bandicoot Twitter account, it does seem like they're teasing something Crash Bandicoot related. If you take a look at their Twitter here, you can see they say that feeling you get when you hear there's a certain party right around the corner. And obviously, this seems like it's kind of signifying that they might have something to announce at that PlayStation showcase tomorrow on September 9th. And while that would make sense because Crash Bandicoot has often been viewed as a PlayStation franchise. This is where Crash Bandicoot originated, and in fact, it was originally developed by Naughty Dog, which is a first-party PlayStation studio. So it would make sense that if Crash Bandicoot does have a brand new game in development, that it would make its announcement at a PlayStation showcase. So that is actually plausible, but this rumor gets a little bit more interesting because Activision is actually sending out a Wumpa Pinata to several people for Crash's 25th anniversary. That's where things start to get really interesting because, yeah, it looks like Activision is hyping something up and they did do something similar with Crash Team Racing. Yeah, all this seems a little too similar and, I mean, it just kind of adds to the speculation that they do have a new announcement to make. Now, will this be a mainline Crash Bandicoot game? And that's where I think it's probably not going to be. It's just a little too early to get a brand new mainline Crash Bandicoot game, but there has been a lot of rumors about a PvE or PvP Crash Bandicoot game by the name of Wumpa League. This has been teased as early as last year, I believe, so we'll kind of see what happens with this, but it does look like a Crash Bandicoot announcement will be made sometime here soon, hopefully at that PlayStation showcase. Next up, though, I want to talk about this September and just how absolutely stacked it is in terms of game releases. Now, I kind of already knew that this month was looking really good and had a lot of potential, but I think especially early in the month, we're already seeing just how good it is after all. Multiple games did get reviewed in the last couple of days, and I mean, if you just take a look at this, I, all these games have been received pretty well, and I mean, if your backlog is already pretty filled up, uh, yeah, it's going to get even harder over the next couple weeks because, I mean, just check this out. Tales of Arise review started to hit today, and it currently sits at an 87 overall score in Metacritic. You have Life is Strange True Colors that got reviewed today. It has an 82. The Artful Escape, that one is launching directly into Xbox Game Pass tomorrow on the 9th. It currently has an 84. WarioWare, that one comes out on the 10th. This one has a 76 on Metacritic, and then yesterday we talked about Fist, that's a PlayStation exclusive, it currently has an 81. All five of these games sounds highly interesting based off of critic reception. I think Tales of Arise, that's the one that right now looks the most promising. Listening to reviews today, it sounds like this very well possibly could be the best Tales of game ever made. Now, personally, my favorite is Tales of Asperia. I really like the story and the characters in that game, but Tales of Arise, I mean, this one looks much more like a high-budget, triple-A style of game, and I'm really interested to see how a Tales of game turns out with them putting so much more time and attention into this franchise. It could be your next 
really big JRPG that kind of expands this generation and maybe gets some level of recognition that maybe the Final Fantasy or Dragon Quest franchise has in the past. That's what I kind of hope with this game, but based off these early reviews here, the combat is excellent, it looks absolutely gorgeous, it has an interesting story. Yeah, this might be a must-play game for JRPG fans out there, especially if you're a fan of the Tales of franchise as a whole. Now, Life is Strange is another franchise that fans have really grown to adore over the years. I thought the first one made by Square Enix years ago, I thought it turned out really well. I enjoyed the story, the characters, I liked the art style. But since then, I haven't really liked the, the follow-ups nearly as well. But here with this new game, it seems like it, it's come back to form. It's probably their most ambitious title since that original title. True Colors is being explained as an emotional experience, and if you do like the Life is Strange franchise, I mean, True Colors is sounding really good. And then you have the Artful Escape, and this is one of those games that might be going a little bit under the radar, but I mean, every time I've seen this game, it's just absolutely popped off screen, and I mean, how couldn't it? I mean, just look at the art in this game. It is just insane, and it really does pop off the screen. But yeah, it currently has an 84 overall score on Metacritic, and this is yet another really good day one release for Xbox Game Pass, it seems. It does seem like in the last couple months, we've had a lot of these really good day one releases, including Psychonauts 2. You had Chris Tells, there was Hades, there was Flight Simulator, and I mean, there was so many more, and then to just kind of top it off, now you have the Artful Escape. We really need to stop saying that Xbox Game Pass is just fodder, because they are getting a lot of these really high quality day one releases and The Artful Escape is just yet another one of those games. And then on the Nintendo side of things, they have a new game coming out as well, WarioWare, and now this one isn't getting like insanely good reviews or anything like that, Dust at a 76, but based off what I'm hearing, it sounds like if you like the WarioWare franchise, you're probably gonna like Get It Together. Now I've actually tried this game out myself through the demo, me and my little girl, we played it together, and it actually is pretty fun. I think that, especially if you want to play this game cooperatively, there's going to be a lot of enjoyment to be had there. And now, like I said before, we also talked about Fist yesterday. That's a good-looking Metroidvania-style game. And even if you look beyond just the games that's been reviewed, over the next couple weeks, I mean, this is what you have. You have Death Stranding Director's Cut, Deathloop, Kena Bridge of Spirits, Lost Judgment, Aragami 2, Eastward, Sable, Astria Ascending, Limited Skate, and there's plenty more sprinkled in there. It, I mean... It is looking absolutely insane for the rest of the month. If you do have a serious backlog, September is going to be hard. But uh, yeah, let me know in the comments below on what game you're most looking forward to. Right now for me, it's going to be Tales of Arise and then Lost Judgment. But yeah, let me know in the comments below. Let's go ahead and talk about PlayStation, though, because several things are happening right now over at PlayStation, including a brand new studio acquisition. Yeah, this one kind of came out of nowhere, and I think this acquisition was really surprising for a lot of people, because I think a lot of people, when this was first announced, they didn't even really know who this studio actually was. So yeah, they did acquire Fire Sprite Studio, which, like I said, uh, uh, that name might not register immediately because some of the games that they've worked on isn't super well known. Fire Sprite has worked with PlayStation in the past, especially with the PlayStation VR, working on games like The Playroom and then Persistence. Now that's actually a pretty good game. And so they went ahead and picked this studio up, and I think for a lot of people, they probably immediately thought, hey, Maybe they're working on some PSVR 2 games, and that is actually very possible. But what's actually interesting about this acquisition is that this studio employs several former members of Studio Liverpool. Now, that actually is a legendary PlayStation developer working on games like Wipeout. But sadly, unfortunately, they were shut down back in 2012 by, of course, Sony. So now that they're picking up Fire Sprite, it's almost like they're bringing back the Wipeout studio, and that's going to make a lot of fans out there really happy. So, and, and that's kind of the thing about this studio. I think that even though they're not necessarily well known, I think that they do have some potential, not only because they have some talent from the old studio Liverpool, but on top of that, I mean, they are quietly a very large studio. They actually have 250 people within this studio. So this is a large studio. And in fact, they're actually working on two new games. 
Yeah, according to the Video Game Chronicles, prior to the acquisition, Fire Sprite had been recruiting for two titles, a game-changing huge multiplayer shooter, and then an ambitious dark narrative blockbuster adventure. So, I mean, I think that this studio is a bit of a mystery, and like I said before, I think they have some potential. They got talent, they have a lot of people at this studio, and we'll kind of see how this one works out for them. This could end up being a big PlayStation VR studio or maybe something a bit more. We'll just kind of have to see how this one plays out, but I'm more than okay with Sony acquiring studios based off potential. This is something that Xbox has been doing as well. Xbox acquired Compulsion Games as an example based off potential, and I do think that they're a bit of a dark horse, and maybe we could see something similar here with Fire Sprite. Now, speaking of PlayStation, even though the PlayStation 5 has yet to turn one years old, we're actually starting to hear a little bit more about the PlayStation 5 Pro. Yeah, I started to see a lot of PlayStation 5 Pro stuff here in the last day. Several media outlets were posting about this, and this all seems to be coming from a YouTube channel by the name of Moore's Law is Dead. Moore's Law is Dead is apparently a reasonably reliable tipster, and, uh, well, he says that he is 100% sure that the PlayStation 5 Pro is indeed real. And actually, if you take a look at what he says here, he says, I am now 100% sure of the PlayStation 5 Pro coming out by the end of 2023, but for sure by the end of 2024. Now, he did go on to say that he doesn't know exactly what this PlayStation 5 Pro will be yet. He did speculate that it might have 8K and it could possibly even cost $600 to $700. But do keep in mind that all of that was just speculation so i wouldn't really take any of the specs that he talks about too serious he could be right or he could be wildly wrong but he does reiterate that he knows that the playstation 5 pro is indeed real because later in the video he does say this i cannot confirm what the specs of the playstation 5 pro will be yet but i will as soon as possible and what i can confirm though is that it is real and it is coming within a few years probably late 2023 and i think for some fans out there this is going to be way too early because i mean fans are still having a hard time just getting the playstation 5 right now so when you hear about a playstation 5 pro this early yeah it seems really strange at first but i actually don't think that this is overly surprising or anything like that I think with last generation, with the PlayStation 4 Pro and then the Xbox One X being this mid-gen refresh, I think that that set a new precedent for consoles in general. I mean, these are big companies and it's not really a secret or anything that they are always working on new hardware. Parts become cheaper over time and if they can make an upgrade on the PlayStation 5, well, they're absolutely going to do that. And I think last generation with the PlayStation 4 Pro and then even with the Xbox One X, these consoles were successful enough that, yeah, I could definitely see them doing that again. It helps refresh the generation by just giving you an extra little bit of power to work with. Fans actually will go out and rebuy these consoles. I know I did that last generation. So, yeah, some fans will go out there, even though they have the PlayStation 5 already, they'll then go out and buy that PlayStation 5 Pro if it's a good enough improvement. So I don't really see a negative side to working on a pro model. And, and in fact, I wouldn't be surprised if Xbox is doing the same thing with the Xbox Series X. They could possibly be working on their pro version as well. I, I, don't, I just don't think that that's overly surprising. The surprising part is that we're hearing about a PlayStation 5 Pro this early. It's not even a year old yet, and we're already hearing about it because of this leaked information. But if you look at things closely, it does follow a similar timeline that PlayStation used last generation. The PlayStation 4 launched in 2013, and then the Pro model launched in 2016. That was three years, and here with the PlayStation 5 launching in 2020, well, I mean, maybe they do have a Pro model ready for 2023. Just based off of past history, I mean, it is actually possible. We'll kind of see what happens with all this. It's just a rumor for the time being, and of course you need to take this with a huge grain of salt. And especially with the speculation made in that video, I wouldn't look at any of the specs that he talked about as more than just gossip, uh, especially with the price. I, I don't think Sony is going to come out with a $600, $700 console. 
I mean, after the PlayStation 3 launched at $600, I don't know if Sony will ever do another $600 console again. We'll see about all that, but on one side, I don't think it's overly surprising to hear that PlayStation is possibly working on a Pro model. Again, I think the timing of this leak is a little strange just because it's so early in a generation, but at the same time, I don't necessarily find it surprising either. Let me know what you think about all this though in the comments below. Do you think that PlayStation will have a Pro console ready by 2023? Let me know. On to the poll of the day though, and I kind of touched up on this earlier in a video, but yeah, the month of September is looking pretty busy, and you can kind of say the same thing when it comes to Xbox Game Pass. If you look at the next couple weeks, Xbox Game Pass has several big day one releases, including Aragami 2, you have Sable, you have The Artful Escape, you have Astri Ascending, and you have Limnuscate. Now, these are just the confirmed September titles, but yeah, I think that there are several interesting games to look forward to here. So I thought I'd ask you all, which one are you most excited to play yourself? And well, 50% of you voted for Aragami 2. And okay, I completely understand that. Not only is Aragami a sequel, so there's already an established fan base here, but it does look really good. The first game is well known for being one of the better stealth based titles. And I think that with Aragami 2, they're probably going to take what they learned with that first game and then just make it even better with the sequel. So I do think that this is an exciting stealth based release and it will be launching on September 17th. Definitely looking forward to that one. Though for myself, I'm going to have to go with Astria Ascending because this game was written by somebody who worked on past Final Fantasy games such as Final Fantasy X and then Final Fantasy VII Remake. Yeah, I want to see how well this one turns out. So I'm going to have to go with Astria Ascending. And plus, I think it does have an interesting art style. It looks kind of similar to your Vanilla Wear games. And, and speaking of that, you do have Sable. That game looks absolutely gorgeous. I don't know how it's going to turn out in terms of gameplay. But, I mean, it does look really good from an art style side of things. Nonetheless, Xbox Game Pass is looking to have another good month for the month of September. Anyways, though, that's it for this episode. But if you liked the video... Don't forget to bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.